to share with you a little bit of the vision of the EEA and um, how we are working toward intersection and working collaboratively uh, with the uh, Ethereum Foundation and other organizations as well moving forward. Uh, just a little background from where I, I, I spent 12 years at Intel in the, in the telecom side of things. So it's very interesting in my world and how it, can, how it addresses the world of more of open source. So it's been a learning experience to, to figure out how we, how we marry the best of both worlds. And I think that's one of the reasons why I think I was even invited to take the, the role of heading up uh, the EA is that uh, we, we, we need to do that. We shouldn't try to reinvent the wheel. And so there's lots of benefits from both uh, aspects of looking at uh, what's a, pure, a purest version of open source and how does that work and how do you also protect the, uh, the enterprises of which uh, we, we, we address. And, and that's how we, uh, we started. Uh, I joined uh, last January, but as many of you know, the EA, uh, uh, the initial date was uh, uh, Joe Lubin told me it was uh, February 29th of the pr prior year, and so um, so in any event, uh, it's a very new organization. But the intent was okay. We have the the open ma mainnet, and there there's a, a vision, a purpose for it. But again, uh, what about the enterprise? And and we are leaving out the opportunity for enterprises to do good in the world as well as be profitable. So that's partially of the role of what I believe we should do and how we work. So uh, so we formed. And what uh, we ended up doing, we took a look at initially, the EA was even thinking of writing code. But when you look at uh, the organizations that I uh, am very familiar with or, uh, or standards orgs that I'm familiar with and have been actively engaged in, in the last 15, 20 years, such as the IEEE. And I don't know if you're familiar with some of these, Etsy uh, and then 3GPP. And you know, 3GPP is a, a partnership project. It's a, it's a group, it's not even formal. They write a spec, there's no code, and then it goes to Etsy, which uh, is the European uh, uh, the version of a standards org, but it covers international. And then uh, it gets rubber stamped, and then it becomes a global spec. Uh, and the, the, the end result, and this is the, the philosophy that I'd really like to see, is that when you buy a, a, if you buy a cell phone here in Prague, and it's made made in um, in Korea, and uh, and then you you show up in Venezuela and you buy a SIM card, you expect that phone to work, and that deals that that's all about interoperability and global inter interoperability, and that's the vision that I'd like to see our world be, uh, and 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 the way to do it is to have a standards org. And so a standards org doesn't write code. We should never compete with our members who do work. And then, uh, and then in order to enforce the standards code, you need some form of certification. And that's the reason why all these phones work. And where I come from, it's called NWIOT, Network Interoperability Testing. Every one of those operators buy that phone, they plug it into their own network, or they don't sign off on it. So we can't do all those things because that's hardware, but there's things that we could do for software, and it, there's lots of ways. You guys, because I originally was, uh, came out of the entertainment gaming industry as a product marketing manager, there's lots that you can do to assure interoperability. So that's where, that's where I, I'm coming from, that's where I've got support from our board um, and the folks in our world. How do we do, do that uh, using the EA? Um, so I've walked you through, I'm not going to go through all the slides, but you'll be able to, to get them. So I already share with you why standards are really important, because without that, we can't accomplish that goal. Um, in our org, we have a very good board of directors, and initially I was telling some of the guys, I don't want you to think, I know it is all the biggest companies in the world, so where are they and compared to the smallest ones? So, uh, but. And as you know, uh, in, in, in the world of blockchain and the enterprise, the, uh, what the lowest hanging fruit are financial services. So of course, and there's Amber, hi Amber. So she helps start the quorum side of things. So, so in any event, um, that was low hanging fruit. But, but if you take a look at some of the folks on our board, Andrew Miller from the University of Illinois, and then so we try to ha have a balanced approach and everybody gets one vote no matter how big or small you are. 
Um, and the organization, since I started, we've doubled in size. And I can share with you the, 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 the argument that we, we make is, okay, if you're looking for interoperability, if you're looking for of assurance, and I can tell you it's not easy to convince the enterprises to bet down, let alone understand what blockchain is, but to bet down and make a commitment, not easy. And so um, that's our story. We use, we use the, what the EA is about, and it can help all of you even if you're looking at where we're headed, which I would like to see us in when we talk about the roadmap. Um, in, uh, enhance our specifications so we can do things to help accelerate the adoption on the public mainnet, because right now we're not doing that, but we want to. So we have 500 members, and we're growing, continually growing uh, more and more. And the reason why is they do want the, the, these big these enterprises, whether small or large, and particularly if they buy from smaller companies. And I'm an ex-Intel guy, but I can tell you, if if we're competing, if, if if Intel is competing in that very small company, it's really hard for the small company to get some traction. So being part of uh, of an organization like an EA, when you say you're you're, you're writing code that conforms to the EA here, it's certified, they feel better about taking the risk. Um, we're diversified. Uh, we're, we have members from all over the world with different categories of business. Um, so uh, we try, the bottom line is folks are joining us in all the, all the different areas. Um, the way we're organized, we have a legal advisory group. We, we're, we're not doing a, a tremendous amount of legal work, but we do try to intersect there. The technical spec work is headed by Connor Svensson. He'll come up and talk to you a little bit about our roadmap and our stack. And then uh, we'll, we're forming a certification working group. And actually now we're going to form a, uh, a global test net. And that global test net means if you guys are writing solutions, based on uh, Enterprise Ethereum. And uh, you can use our test net, and uh, we have a goal of getting that up and running. We now have a commitment from different companies, including Microsoft, to help us do this. So uh, we plan to implement that. And then you can actually have your customers, they don't have to be a member of the org, and they can, they can, they can use it. And uh, I'm just checking the time. Is it tracking there, or where is it? <laughs> track the time. You're there, keep me posted. Okay, so another, another thing that we do is we now have associate member program. So I don't know if some of you saw, but we entered an agreement with Hyperledger, and I w was invited to present. And we did get an applause when Brian Bellendorf, and I don't know if he's here, in, uh, invited me. But um, at the end of the day, I encouraged the, the folks who work on Fabric to develop a version that could conform to the EA spec. And, and since they, they're not a standards org, there's very good synergy. And we invite all these other orgs around the, that could be synergistic because there isn't any one org that really solves all the problems that you need for uh, deliver, developing solutions for um, blockchain. We also are very involved with the, 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 the DIFF organization. Some of the folks are familiar with the organizations that do social impact. We, we don't plan to deal with and write solutions for identity. We'll partner with the W3C, with DIFF, ID2020, and come up with solutions because, again, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, and so how we operate, we have tech work, technical working groups. We also have special interest groups. And so we have one for financial services, one for health. And the, it's, we're a member-driven org. We, we don't run the org, the members do. So if anybody wanted to have more visibility, whatever, you, whatever members want to see, they join and they, they raise their hands and they, they can make it happen. So that, that's how the org works. And that's how all standards org works. Um, so um, with that, I wanted to bring up Connor. Um, so uh, I come out of the world of telecom. and telecom, they have, it's called an OSI seven layer stack. Um, we want to formalize how work is done technically so you can have multiple vendors of choice. And by the way, this stack, you don't even need to take a photo. Uh, if you go to our website, you don't even, I, now you don't even have to say who you are because I know there's, well, you can just go to our website and you can download our stack and our spec, everything, and just do whatever you want in developing whatever you want. And then if you want to use our logo, or, or go through our certification process, process then you would, we, you would be asked to join because of intellectual property requirements, et cetera. But anybody here can, can download our spec and work on 
on enterprise Ethereum. So I'll turn it over to Connor. He's going to walk you through and talk to you a little bit about our architecture stack. Thanks, Ron. Hey, everyone. So I'm um, the, the chair of the tech spec working group, but I'm also, um, I guess, developer by background. I wrote Web3J, the Java library for working with Ethereum and have my own um, a blockchain technology startup as well. So I, I come at this from a, I guess, a dev perspective ultimately. The idea though with the architecture stack, as Ron said, um, you know, it, I guess inspiration was the, the OSI seven layer model, but really it was the, the first artifact that the EA produced and put out there as a reference point to try and capture everything that we're thinking about uh, with respect to the EA. Uh, the actual inspiration for the stack was uh, a talk that was done at DevCon last year where um, one of the um, developers working for the foundation um, did a talk on the anatomy of an Ethereum client. And one of the really neat things that they did there was they highlighted the components in yellow that were aligned with the yellow paper and um, you know, basically adopted that idea as well because I thought it's a really neat way of you know, talking in terms of where these things are formally specified in the yellow paper uh, then also those components that are core to just general Ethereum, and then we added on a piece which was what we see as being enter more enterprise-focused pieces. The key always with the EA has been about Ethereum technology, and so you know, we, we always see the initiatives that we're doing as being a superset of what's happening in the world of public Ethereum. Um, we, we never want to sort of um, be separating ourselves from it because, you know, uh, many members of the EA are you know, passionate about Ethereum technology. That's why they joined up. That's what got me into it as well, because you know, I, I came from an enterprise background, but then um, you know, really like the Ethereum technology. And it reminds me of the, the community, reminds me somewhat what of the Linux community back in the day, and we all know how well that panned out there as well. But the, the, the stack, I'm not going to go through all the different layers about it now, but I think the, the, the key point is, is that we're trying to just encompass um, you know, everything that we believe is in scope there, and you can certainly review it in your own time and uh, go over to the EA website to, to review it. What I did want to talk about, though, was the, um, the, the specifications that we've released. This week, we released two new specifications. Um, on this slide here, we have the, the organizations that directly contributed to that, these specifications. Uh, I think historically, there's been sort of a perception with the EA that there was you know, only a few firms contributing to it. But I think what's really nice about this is it shows that you know, you've got a fairly good cross-section of different companies getting involved uh, in the actual specification work, which I think is really cool to see. And so this week, the two specs that we released, one of them was the client specification V2. And so we released V1 uh, to coincide with um, the consensus um, CoinDesk conference in May of this year. Um, we're now on a, a, a six-month release cycle with the, the EA specifications, whereby um, every six months the, the next version will come out. So we'd envisage the next one will be you know, likely April next year. All of the development of these specifications now is taking place on GitHub. We're following similar sort of processes to how the W3C specs are being developed. So um, people, uh, members are submitting issues and pull requests with changes. They get approved uh, by um, just diff different members. Uh, there's actually going to be a lot more transparency as well very soon in that we're going to be um, the actual repo is no longer going to be private. So people can see exactly what's happening uh, as, as the specifications evolve. But in terms of the highlights, just wanted to sort of bring your attention to a couple of them. Um, one of them is that we've now, um, in, in the EA spec, we have a core set of JSON RPC uh, um, API implementations from Ethereum that you need to implement to have uh, an enterprise Ethereum client. We've also added some additional ones, uh, this EEA, which we use in EEA namespace. And this is mainly right now functioned uh, around supporting the, the privacy models that are specified um, by the EA, so these are like your your quorum type approach to privacy, where you have a uh, you know transactions being stored uh, off off chain, um, but also there's some on chain techniques as well uh, that the likes of Clearmatics have been um, promoting with, the, with their actual client implementation. 
We also uh, reference the pre-compiled contracts as well. So we list the, the, you know, the, the eight um, pre-compiled contracts that are specified in the yellow paper. They're all now referenced in the EA spec as being mandatory requirements. And the other thing as well is that we've actually uh, provided a, um, an API in for network permissioning. The, you know, the govern governance of private permission networks is obviously a, you know, it's, 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 it's a challenge. And so we've, we've now included in our specification an API for this based on work that uh, some members have contributed. Um, and so it's, you know, for us, it's, I think it's, it's you know, a, a good move forward in that um, right now there's not really any, any standardization around this just yet. And we've also added in a security considerations section, but that's more based on um, just best practices around you know, security for these permission chains. The other big uh, specification release was the off-chain trusted uh, compute spec. And so this was mainly driven by Intel and iExec, but a number of different um, you know, contributors did get involved, um, including Oracleis and I think Consensus did some stuff. But the, the, the point is, is it um, provides a JSON RPC based API for vendors whereby they can achieve, um, well, re re really achieve a few different things there. One is use it for Oracle type services. Another where they just want to use a secure enclave to do some sort of computation, or it could just be doing some sort of computations um, off chain in a, um, again, it, you know, a, a secure environment, but stuff that wouldn't actually um, be easy to do on-chain due to the performance requirements. So it's, it's, it's you know, for, for us, we're really happy that it's made it out there because, you know, this, it's a second spec. We envisage that there will be multiple specs uh, appearing over time. Um, but, you know, especially given that, um, you know, it, it, it's ready in time for, you know, this conference as well, which, you know, happy to have it out there and I'm really keen for people to take a look and start feeding back into it. Um, so that, that was all I was going to say here, and I'll pass back to Ron to talk about the roadmap. Thank you. So we, we have a timetable for roadmaps, and we try to tie, tie it to uh, events, so it puts pressure on the folks doing work. <laughs> and so uh, that, that helps. So we, our plan is to have a six-month, as, as Connor said, a six-month cadence. So we're an open door. Anyone who wants to be involved in the EA can be a member. And just to share with you, so you know, it, it's $3,000 for a member with a company that has 50 or less employees. Um, so we try to make it affordable. We're a nonprofit, so the, the money that comes in just pays for the work that we do, trying to support the activities to get get the spec done. We're not, not, it's, we're not a profit-making venture, and we don't make a lot of money. Uh, and what we get, we get approved by our board, and then we spend it on making sure our test net will get in place. We have a test net. We'll try to promote to the whole world um, the benefits of blockchain technology. So, we, so those are the things, some of the things we do. And, uh, and again, we hire a folks to work on our spec. And as far as making sure it conforms to the quality and caliber that if we show our spec to a standards org, and there's, um, they're called SDO, standards development orgs, they're even more rigid, like IEEE, and we're not, we're, an we're like a Wi-Fi alliance, so we can do marketing. So the quality and caliber of our spec has to be top notch, and that's why our spec version is for point five is point five for the trusted execution because it's really our first one out. So we're not making it a, a formal spec yet compared to the other work that we're doing. So every six every six months, uh, we'll be coming out with a new one. Uh, we're we're trying to get to the point of our. Uh, you don't see the test net there because I wasn't sure that we'll have one uh, until I get commitments from members to say they're going to do it. And now I just got those commitments here at DevCon. So we absolutely this is this and uh, and to, in order to make that happen, uh, you need a common consensus mechanism, correct? So that's what we're working on. So um, anyone who's interested, and in, and you could have a reason. Uh, not everybody's looking at enterprise side things, but we do want to scale so our solutions can uh, can support all kinds of future aspects of what maybe some of the things that you're working on. And, uh, and then we'll have, so we'll be tying our next one uh, time to like the consensus 2000, 
18 event uh, time frame. And then uh, by next DEF CON, we'll have release four. And then our plan is to launch certification. You do certification through uh, independent labs. So I want to leave just a couple minutes. So we're just about done. I just share with you, we're really committed to social impact. Part of the reason why I have this here is that we're going to work hard to get the enterprises to support, and they already do. I, I, I've learned about it through uh, some of our board members, but we, we really want to do a good job to help uh, the whole side of social impact. So with that said, um, we have just uh, about five minutes uh, for any questions. Um, so there you go. Connor, you can come up in case it's technical. Thanks. Um, on the roadmap, is there going to be um, uh, another client implementation of Quorum? Okay, that's a, that's a good question. So initially, Quorum jump-started the work that we did. And, um, but right now, what we, uh, I'd say this about six months ago, we transitioned and there was a Quorum working group. And Amber was completely involved in it, as she can tell you. We, we transitioned that, and we did change the name because we want the work. We want this to be a collective, so there isn't anything. Quorum, Quorum's work contribute to the technical spec that's built into the spec that you'll download. And so there are multiple clients that are all incorporated, rolled into one, that should be, have the level of interoperability is de defined by what they all agree upon that's required, must have. So you have Clearmatics, you have Block Apps, you have the new Pantheon solution. Um, all of those folks worked very closely together. So. Quorum, Quorum is a platform, or, or you can download the source code, right, for Quorum. And, uh, but it'll, the goal is, that, and it is, because the Quorum guys are very involved in our org, um, it'll, it'll conform to the A spec. Any other questions? Alex? Sorry, could you share, I know that there was a, a couple sessions that we had on um, <clears throat> interaction with like public Ethereum. Could you just give a high level overview of what the outcomes of those were? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. And we're, so we've had multiple meetings with the folks from Public Ethereum, and our goal is we, we should be very coll collegiately working collaboratively together, and we are. Um, and, um, and so we, need, we, we track the roadmap that goes on in the Ethereum Foundation. We had some meetings where we talk about like the EIP process and how the EIP process should benefit, we should be mutually benefiting each other. So we had a two hour meeting that Connor actually presented on and others. And so we will actually look at what we develop and if we see things that can work on the, yeah, your, um, and, uh, and the ECRs or uh, any of the um, EIPs that make sense, We'll do it, and we're also giving visibility to the folks in the Ethereum Foundation too. They can go participate and see what we're doing. Um, what's not on here, and I'll just add, I right now the work we're doing is pr our pr private permission networks. I've talked to our to folks in our org and teammates. We re we want a, a, a roadmap to to address public commercial networks that use the Ethereum mainnet. And uh, so part of what we're looking to do, and I've talked to a number of companies, they, to co join us and contribute, how do we, how do we bring that in? And, and so we're leveraging, there's so many opportunities for the public mainnet that are commercial. And I can think of some that I'd love to see, like get rid of the ticket scalp as a secondhand ticket market. I would pay money to have that done. So there, you, your imagination could just take you everywhere for what we want to do, because there's a lot of work, but you definitely need to um, create a spec. You need to get, get it certified. If you're going to get like FIFA or anybody else to say, I'm going to buy into it, they're going to want to know that there's 500 companies behind it. There's multiple vendors that they can pick from. Any other questions? Great. Thanks very much. Thank